Hello everybody, this is a short video about the RFM69 radio data module and about the traps for young players. When you intend to use that module the first time, just make sure that you have the correct power supply. The power supply voltage range goes from 1.8 to 3.6 volts and the common voltage that is used is 3.3 volts. So my suggestion or my recommendation is use 3.3 volt power supply as well as a 3.3 microcontroller. That is because the logic data levels need to correlate to the power supply voltage. The next thing is the PCB routing. As you handle with the RF device, with high frequencies, provide a very good ground plane for RF. That means you better have a solid, uninterrupted layer at your PCB that is tied to ground. And you better don't daisy chain any parts on the power rails. That is because otherwise you can have some trouble and misfunctions uh, or malfunctions just because of the fact that voltage drops occur and it could be really nasty to troubleshoot that. So better provide single power tracks to the to the individual um, loads just to avoid that. Also keep in mind SPI issues. To my experience the RFM69 radio module is not able to cope with a clock rate of um, lower than 2 megahertz. So better use 2 megahertz or a clock rates above. But the max, keep in mind that there is also a maximum clock rate stated in the data sheet. But the trap is that the data sheet says no value for the lowest clock rate. But to my experience, there is a lowest clock rate. At 2 megahertz, it worked well for me. At 500 kilohertz, it didn't work at all. Or only with um, mystic malfunctions. <laughs> A really nightmare. So now you know how to avoid it. And if you use the CCS compiler, you have to provide dummy data. If you like to read out any value from the module, because the clock rate would be, or the clock at all, the clock signal would be interrupted if uh, no data is to be sent. And yeah, if you don't have an oscilloscope, um, recommendable is a DSO. Uh, that's yeah, also pretty horrific to troubleshoot that. So now you know, you just have to send dummy data in this example here hex OO just to provide the clock to clock the data out of the module. Also keep in mind to use short and shielded SPI connection cables because the clock as well as the data is pretty high frequency and long loose cables unshielded uh, not the best to get a safe data connection. Okay, that's all. I hope I provided you some helpful hints that help you to have a happy start with the module. Yeah, please click on thumbs up for the video to provide me and please your comments down below.